Is there a huge opportunity in REITs right now and is it time to buy? I was actually very overwhelmed by the uh, interest in REITs from the comments of my last video because I think many of you have seen that in the last two years, the share prices of many REITs have dropped significantly because of the Fed's very uh, aggressive increase in interest rates. So this has caused the dividend yield or the distribution yield of many REITs to look attractively high. So many of you will be thinking if I buy REITs right now, I lock in those very high yields going forward. And at the same time, once the Fed starts to cut rates later this year or later next year, then many of these REITs would have huge capital gain potential. Now, while that is true, it is very important to only select the highest quality REITs because these are the REITs that will rebound and recover, whereas low quality REITs may never recover. So how do you pick the good ones? Let's find out in this video. First, for those of you who have no idea what REITs are, they stand for Real Estate Investment Trust. Now, when you buy a stock, you're buying a share in a business. But when you buy a REIT, you're buying a portfolio of real estate assets. And these real estate assets could be shopping malls, hotels, office buildings, hospitals, industrial parks, data centers. Now, the main objective about investing in REITs is not so much for huge capital gains. If you're looking for capital gains, just buy US stocks, growth stocks like Nvidia and Meta and Amazon and so on and so forth. But the main objective of REITs is to get dividends or in the REIT world, they call it distributions. One of the reasons is because by law, 90% of the income that the REITs earn from the rentals of their tenants, the 90% of it has to be paid back to shareholders twice a year. So they offer a very good steady stream of dividends. So in a way, real estate investment trusts allow you to own a portfolio of properties all around the world and earn passive income, which is now yielding about 5 to 8%. Uh, and enjoy at the same time capital appreciation of the real estate. And in a way, it's a way to own property with minimal investment. Usually when you buy property, you need a few hundred thousand dollars to buy property, right? But through REITs, you can buy property with as little as a hundred bucks without having to pay stamp duty and without having to pay taxes on rental income. As far as Singapore REITs are concerned, Singapore REITs are 100% tax free and you can own real estate without the hassle of taking huge mortgage loans, managing tenants, maintaining the properties, and you can diversify and own hundreds of prime properties all around the world, again, with just a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars. So for me personally, people have asked me for many years, Adam, do you invest in real estate? Well, not really. The only property I own is the house I'm living in, but in a way, I own property all around the world through REITs. Now, if you are a dividend investor, REITs offer some of the highest dividend yields in the world as compared to uh, dividend stocks. So for example, you can look at the S&P 500. If you buy the uh, S&P 500, you can see that collectively the dividend yield average is about 1.81%. In fact, right now, I think it's even lower than that. So like I said, when you buy US stocks, you're more interested in the capital gains and not the dividends because dividends are very low. It's like 1%, 2%, right? But in comparison, you can see that the Singapore REIT index, currently the dividend yield is 5.4% and the US REIT index currently is 4.2%. Now, some of you may say, but if I buy the uh, government bonds, the US Treasury bond right now, I'm also getting about 4%, right? Yes, but do understand that right now, the long-term interest rates and the short-term rates are relatively high, but they won't remain high forever. Again, by this year and next year, the Fed will start cutting rates and the 10-year Treasury yield, and in fact, the Treasury bonds, the interest will start to come down, all right? In fact, if you take a look at the last five-year average, the 10-year government bond yield, uh, US bond yield is about 2.45%. So if you stay invested in Treasury bonds, and you have to reinvest it one year from now, you will get much lower rates. But right now, if you buy the right REITs, you can lock in these high yields because REITs will keep raising their dividends over time, the high quality REITs. At the same time, you get huge capital gain potential from the REITs. Now, of course, you can buy REITs that are listed in the US, 
REITs listed in Singapore, listed in Malaysia, listed in Hong Kong, listed in Taiwan. But for me personally, I prefer to focus on Singapore listed REITs. Why? There are many reasons. Number one, Singapore listed REITs actually offer the highest dividend yields and the lowest volatility in the entire world. So you take a look at this chart, you can see that over here you have got the Singapore REIT index. There are two indexes. And uh, right now you can see that their dividend yield is about 4 to 5% dividend yield. And their 90-day volatility is about, uh, about 12%, thereabouts, right? If you compare, compare that to the US REIT index, you can see US REITs, they give lower dividend yield and much higher volatility. And the second reason is because Singapore REITs are tax-free. Capital gains, no tax. Dividends, no tax. Whereas if I buy US REITs, there's no capital gains tax for me as a Singaporean, but there's 30% withholding tax on dividends. And that's why I'm not interested in buying US listed assets with any kind of dividends because I don't want to pay the 30% withholding tax. And the final reason is that the Singapore dollar is very, very strong and Singapore real estate assets are very strong. So when uh, interest rates rose significantly in the last two years, many, for example, US commercial real estate property prices dropped significantly. Even European property dropped significantly. But of the Singapore property, whether office property, logistics property, or uh, industrial property, uh, the drop was very insignificant. So for all these reasons, I, I love to invest in Singapore listed REITs. Now, as I said earlier on, in the last two years, because interest rates were hiked so fast, many REITs, whether in Singapore or US, the share price has dropped significantly. So this has caused the dividend yield to look very, very attractive. Now, remember what is the formula for uh, calculating dividend yield, or we call it distribution yield, in, in, in terms of REITs, but it's the same thing, right? So the dividend yield or distribution yield equals to the dividends per share, or in the REIT world, we call it DPU. So DPU is basically the dividends per share or the distributions per unit, same thing, divided by the current share price, right? So again, because the share price of the REITs have fallen a lot uh, in the last two years, this caused the yield to be very, very high historically. So when you buy at a high yield right now, okay, you lock in a high yield. So later when the share price rebounds and the yield falls, it's okay because you've locked in the high yield. Right? Now, again, one of the most common mistakes that investors make is they just look for REITs with the highest dividend yield. For example, uh, if you take a look at this uh, REIT screener, by the way, if you're our student of our REIT course, you get access to all our Piranha Profits REIT screeners, right? And this shows you all the data in front of you. So if you take a look at some of these REITs over here, right? You've got First REIT, Capital Land China REIT, Sessio REIT, Daiwa House Logistics Trust, right? All these REITs, you look at the, there we are, uh, this one, DPU yield, which is the dividend yield, right? It looks very attractive, right? 9% and 8% and 7% looks really attractive. You think, hey, every $100 I put in, I get you know $9.90 of dividends. Wow, that's really high. That's much higher than the bank interest rates or the bond rates and all that looks fantastic. But be very, very careful. That is the very dangerous mistake that investors make. Don't just look at the, the, the distribution yield, the dividend yield, because many of these REITs with high yields are low quality, lousy REITs, where the reason the dividend yield is so high, okay, is because the REITs, the DPUs, have been collapsing. Not just because of the pandemic, not just because of high interest rates, but because of structural problems. So when the DPU is dropping and the share price drops even more, it makes the yield look very good. And this fools people to buy these high yields but in the long run, they can't make money because the share price never recovers and the dividends they are getting reduces every single year. So you've got to be very careful, right? Now, in Singapore, there are about 41 listed REITs. Would I buy all 41 of them? No. <laughs> in fact, out of the 41, I would say less than 10 of them are safe to buy. Less than 10 of them are high quality REITs. So 
how do you select the high quality ones and avoid the dangerous ones, right? So there are a few criteria I look at. Criteria number one, always make sure that the REIT you invest in has a history of consistently growing gross revenue, net property income, and DPU, or distributions per unit or dividends per share. Very important. We want to see long-term consistency and resilience. So for example, let me take an example of Maple Tree Logistics Trust listed in Singapore. And you can get all this data from the annual report and take a look at their gross revenue for the last five years. And you can see that it's been growing consistently. That's what we want to see, right? Next, net property income, uh, also growing consistently for the last five years. You want to make sure it is growing consistently. Now, having said that, Yes, there are some high quality REITs where the revenue and the net property income dropped temporarily during COVID in 2020. For example, another good REIT is Fraser Centerpoint Trust. They own a lot of suburban malls in Singapore. And in 2020, all the malls, as you know, were shut down. We couldn't go to the mall, so they couldn't collect rental and they had to give rental rebates to the tenants. So because of that, uh, for the year 2020, there was a drop in gross revenue and net property income. But that's temporary. So if the revenue and net income drops for temporary reasons because of things outside of the control of the REIT, that's fine, okay? So besides 2020, we wanna see revenue and net property income growing consistently for at least the last five years. Next, we wanna make sure that the DPU, the distributions per unit, the dividends per share is also increasing consistently, okay? Now again, if it's like a retail read and because of 2020 pandemic, there was a drop in the DPU, it's forgivable, all right? And of course, in 2022 last year and uh, 2020, sorry, 2023 especially, because of the super high interest rates, interest costs went up for the REITs, utility costs went up because of inflation. So if there was a dip in DPU in 2022, um, that is also forgivable, all right? But you want to see that long term, the DPU is increasing because I don't expect COVID to happen regularly. I don't uh, expect the super high inflation of 2022 to recur, right? So let me give you an example. Again, on the annual report, it only shows you five years, which is not good enough. You want to see a longer history. So I like to go to the website itself of the REIT and they will show you the entire history of the dividends that they are paying. You want to make sure that long term, it's, it's going up, all right? So at Maple Tree Logistics Trust, um, I go to the that distribution uh, history, and you can see from the beginning, 2005, when the REIT started, all the way to 2023, look at the dividends that they are paying, right? The dividends is increasing consistently over the years. Now, it doesn't go up every single year, of course. There are years where it, it dips, but you want to see a general uh, uptrend over the long run. Now, do note that historically, REITs used to pay dividends four times a year, but now uh, some of them are paying it uh, twice a year. So it, de it depends on the REIT. Could be twice a year, could be four times a year. So remember to avoid REITs that don't have a consistent history of gross revenue, net property income, and DPU growth, right? With the exceptions of 2020 pandemic right, and uh, uh, 2023, the high inflation and high interest rates. Besides that, it must be increasing. Next, very important, only invest in REITs where they have consistent growth in the net asset value per share or NAV per share, very important. So you can see over here, in the last five years, the NAV per share uh, of Maple Tree Logistics Trust has been growing. Now, there was a slight dip in the last financial year, and that happened to many REITs, even the high quality runs. Why? Because like I mentioned, because of the super high interest rates that increase the cap rate for real estate, hence the property valuation drop for many REITs. And because of the drop in the property valuation, it caused the NAV per share to drop in the last financial year. So that's okay. But besides last year, we want to see a growth in NAV. There are some REITs, be very careful. Over the years, what REITs do is that REITs keep acquiring more properties to grow their assets under management, right? And for the REIT to keep growing, it has to keep on raising capital. It has to issue shares 
and raise capital from shareholders. And there are some lousy REIT managers where they get more, they sell more shares to the public and they buy properties that are overvalued, that are not DPU accretive and not NAV accretive. In other words, by doing that, they dilute shareholders. So although the REIT's AUM increases, but the dividends per share doesn't increase, all right? And, and this dilutes shareholders. Now, so how do you know when it's a lousy REIT manager that does that? Very simple, look at the NAV per share. These are the REITs where the NAV per share doesn't go up over time. The NAV per share goes down over time. Avoid those REITs like the plague. All right, so that's the second thing to look for. The third thing to look for, very important, is the debt to asset ratio, also known as the gearing ratio. Remember, REITs, the property they own is not financed totally by equity. They finance it by debt as well. Okay, And when a REIT uh, finances with too much debt, uh, they get into trouble because if interest rates keep going up, they have to pay more interest on the debt and the DPU will drop. And if the debt is too high and the property valuation drops, the gearing ratio uh, goes above 50%, the REIT will get into trouble where the banks will pull the bank loans. And that is how uh, some of the REITs have recently uh, collapsed because of that. So you gotta be very, very careful. So uh, how do we check that? Uh, gearing ratio, you can check it from the annual report as well as the quarterly reports of the REITs. Now, again, if you are one of our students in the REIT course, you can uh, check it out over here. Uh, we call it the gearing ratio, right? So the gearing ratio is equal to the debt, total debt divided by total assets. So you always want to make sure that it is uh, ideally 40% or less. Then it is safe. Okay. Now, if it goes above 40%, it's still okay as long as it doesn't go above 42%. If it goes above 42%, ooh, that's very dangerous. right? So ideally 40% or less, but at the most 42%. Okay, uh, next, look at the interest coverage ratio. We want that to be at least three to five times. The higher, the better, yeah? So looking at our initial example, Maple Tree Logistics Trust. Um, let's uh, find that over here, Maple Tree Logistics Trust. Uh, give me a second, let me just sort by name so it's easier to find. Ah, there we are. Okay, so Maple Tree Logistics Trust. What is the uh, gearing ratio? The gearing ratio is thirty-eight point eight. Safe, safe. All right. Okay. Interest coverage ratio. Is it above three? Three or above? Three point seven. Safe. Now, would I, for example, invest in Lipo Morphs Indonesia Retail Trust? Uh, no, I wouldn't dare to do it because although the uh, dividend yield looks attractive at 22%. Whoa, so attractive 22%. But <clears throat> what is the gearing ratio? Oh my God, it is 44. That's really dangerous. All right. So I wouldn't dare to buy that, right? Another one, Capital Pacific Oak US REIT. Ooh, 16% dividend yield, but gearing ratio 43%. Ooh, dangerous. I wouldn't touch that, right? So these are the things I look for, right? Next. Next is you have to look at the property yield. Now, the property yield is very different from the dividend yield, okay? Property yield is equal to the net property income divided by the market value of all the properties. So, the property yield tells you that for every $100 of the property value, how much rental can it get? And of course, the higher the property yield, the better, okay? Let me see, how high is high, right? So, well, it depends. So, for example, if I'm investing in a retail REIT, like Fraser Centerpoint Trust, then I will compare the retail REIT to other retail REITs. And ideally, I want to buy the one with the highest property yield within REITs of the same industry, right? So you compare REITs in the same industry. At the same time, you always compare the property yield with the cost of debt. You have to always compare these two, right? What is cost of debt? Cost of debt means when the REIT takes bank loans or when they sell bonds, what's the interest they're paying on their debt? So you've got to make sure that the property yield is higher than the cost of debt. Then the REIT is profitable, right? So in the case of Maple Tree Logistics Trust, 
What is the property yield? It is 4.8%. What's the cost of debt? Is 2.5%. So what is the yield spread? The yield spread is the difference between the property yield and the cost of debt. So the difference is 2.3%. Now, the higher the yield spread, the better, okay? And ideally, we want to select when the yield spread is at least 2%. Right? So in the case of this read like land lease, would I buy this one? Maybe not. Why? Although the, the dividend yield looks attractive at 7.6%, but the yield spread is only 1.2%, the gearing ratio is above 40%, so this is not something that I would buy personally. Now, of course, besides those things I talked about, there are a lot of other criteria I look at before I invest in a REIT. So for those of you who are interested to learn REITs in depth, uh, you can take my REIT investing course that's actually been out for many, many years, and I just updated it um, in the last month with the latest examples. And in the REIT investing course, you learn all about how to analyze REITs, uh, both in the Singapore market as well as the US market. But to give you an overview of all the things that I look for when I invest in a REIT, and I've covered some of them in this uh, video today, would be again, what's number one? First of all, I look at a high property yield, which is at least four to 5%, and the property yield should be above the cost of debt, with the yield spread ideally 2% or higher. Number two, I look for REITs that have a history of consistent growth in gross revenue, net property income, and distributions per unit. Now, bear in mind that if you are analyzing US REITs, they use very different terminology. For example, in the US REIT uh, market, we don't use the word net property income. They use what we call AFFO, Adjusted Funds from Operations. So it's different terminology, right? Uh, the third criteria I talked about is conservative debt. We want to ensure the REIT has a gearing ratio of 40% or less, but this doesn't apply to US REITs. Most US REITs, the gearing ratio is 50 to 60%. So another reason why I'm a bit fearful of US REITs is because they are very highly leveraged, all right? High interest coverage ratio of at least three to five times. Uh, again, cost of debt less than property yield. And you have to also take a look at all the loans that the REIT has. You can check it out on their annual report to make sure that the majority of their loans are on fixed interest rates and not variable rates. And their loan maturities are spread out safely over the next five years. The other thing that I looked for, which I explained, was a rising NAV per share. If a REIT can have increasing NAV per share, it shows that the REIT manager is acting in the best interest of shareholders to acquire properties that are NAV accretive and not NAV dilutive. And of course, the time you want to buy the REIT is when you see a reasonable valuation. And uh, in today's market, again, I would say the valuations are pretty attractive where we get dividend yields of uh, 5 to 7%. But again, remember, dividend yield is important, but not the most important thing. You have to make sure it's a high quality REIT that passes all these initial criteria that I talked about. And I also look at the price to NAV ratio and make sure it's below the five-year average so that I know that historically the REIT is undervalued. In addition to the quantitative factors, there are also a lot of qualitative factors I look at. For example, things like I want to ensure that the REIT I invest in has a very strong sponsor. If the REIT has a weak sponsor, it's very dangerous. For example, if you heard of um, Lipo Mall's REIT, during COVID, the malls were shut down and because their sponsor, Lipo Karawachi, was not a strong sponsor, they were in you know, financial difficulty themselves, they couldn't you know, help the finance the REIT, so Lipo Mall's REIT has, has then done very right? So we look at things like tenant concentration ratio, always ensure that the REIT you invest in has diversified tenants that are strong and avoid REITs that have too many tenants in cyclical sectors or tenants that have weak balance sheets. So again, there are a lot of things we look at to ensure we only invest in the highest quality REITs because when you do, you can get very good dividend income in a very, very safe way. Now, some of you may be wondering, Adam, there are so many things to look at. Are you gonna take hours and hours to analyze a REIT? No, you can do all this analysis in a matter of minutes. 
using our proprietary REIT screener uh, that you can get access to in our REIT investing course. So if you're interested to learn a lot more about how to invest in REITs, you can go to piranaprofits.com and look under our courses, under real estate, under property investing, you can look for our, um, that, our REIT investing course. And by the way, do send an email to support at piranaprofits.com for a special discount coupon that we'll happily share with you. I hope you enjoyed this video and do subscribe for more videos coming up. If you wanna catch my latest videos, click on the subscribe button right now click on the bell so you get instant notifications once I upload my latest video. If you wanna check out my online courses, go to piranaprofits.com. We're gonna learn how to invest and how to trade the financial markets and create an income from all around the world. If you wanna join my live Wealth Academy program, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com and find out more about how you can learn investing and trading live online. This is Adam Kuhl and may the markets be with you.